Many questions are often directed towards what we need to do if you have reflux to better characterize the full extent of your disease. We have a number of tools that we use. In particular, we may use a series of probes to measure the amount of reflux that comes up into your throat or into your esophagus, known as a pH probe study. This helps gauge how severe your reflux is and what contents may be affecting your disease and how we should treat it. Another important tool is esophageal motility, which is usually measured by a small catheter placed through your nostril, which you then swallow into the esophagus. This gives us the opportunity to measure the sphincter pressures, as well as to measure the disorder of swallowing. But really, the most important thing about motility is to make sure you do not have another condition, which is actually the opposite of reflux, known as achalasia. In this particular case, the sphincter muscle is actually too tight, and we wouldn't want to try and correct your reflux, but rather fix the problem of an overly tight sphincter muscle leading to retention in the esophagus and simulating reflux type symptoms. Other tests that are very important because the weakened lower esophageal sphincter can be overcome by the gastric pressure are looking at studies of gastric motility or gastric emptying. In these cases, you may be asked to eat an egg preparation and then this is measured leaving your stomach over a four hour period of time. We're looking for a condition known as gastroparesis, which actually up to 40 to 45% of patients will have as the result of their reflux disease. Another very important test is the electrogastrogram. This is a test that measures motility because approximately 20% of patients will have a problem with the emptying of their stomach caused by a faulty sphincter at the bottom of the stomach. Very often in these cases, we can improve the sphincter emptying at the bottom of the stomach, which will make the reflux either disappear or come under better control.